This is the voice of the report of the week, signing on. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and everyone watching or listening, this is Report of the Week here, and this is VORW, the voice of the Report of the Week, with your host, the one and only, the Report of the Week. There may be impersonators, but I am the one and only true Report of the Week. Alright. So, that's for certain. So here we are this, uh, this afternoon, uh, more, more like evening, it's... Uh, Almost, almost evening, I guess. Whatever time it is, it really doesn't matter what time I'm recording this at. It's what time that you're listening to this at. That's what's important. Um, you yeah. know, so that's one thing to to consider, one thing to think about, and all that. So that being said, hope you're doing all right. Hope you're well. I really do. Truly do. Hope everything is, uh, satisfactory on your end. Hoping for the best. Hoping for the best. Um, yeah, I'm doing, uh, doing alright. Went to the dentist the other day, as I'm sure you, you heard me say in my last show. How'd that work out exactly? Um, you know, it, uh, it went. I'm sorry if you could hear birds chirping. It's a nice day out today, so I'm out on the back porch um, recording this segment. But, um... Dentist went smooth. Hope you know that. Keep that in mind. Bear that in mind, if you will. The dentist went quite smooth. Um, you know, the problem with the dentist the last time that I went... I don't know. I just didn't like their service... They did a bad job with the procedures, and I don't know, they were a bit disrespectful, alright? So I didn't really care for them that much. So I was kind of worried about going back to the dentist, you know, after a year and a half of, uh, you know, of all this, and finally laying back down in the operating theater and, uh, you know, letting them get to work, and I was worried they would screw up, possibly, or just make things worse. Because what they had to do this time... In the very back, left molar. Well, it's my left. It's your right. All right. Anyways, back left molar. Very, very back. Real deep cavity in there. <sighs> Combine that now with, you know, whatever, two other cavities as well, right? So there's two other cavities in there. Three in total. Real deep one in the back. Another one, I think, in between the two teeth, and then just a small one. So, it wasn't painful at all. Uh, no problem with that. But, um, you know, definitely, uh, definitely need to be fixed. It could have been fixed last year, but instead of actually filling it, the, 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 the doctor put in a temporary filling, which took over an hour and a half to put in, and then said, all right, uh, yeah, uh, just come back next appointment and we'll take that out for you. I mean, I don't know, that was a, that was a complete and total rip-off, uh, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, it was, the procedure went perfectly fine. Um, there was a new doctor there, who was actually efficient, professional, and respectful. Um, so a fine, a fine, uh, doctor. And a, uh, different hygienist as well. So they worked efficiently, they dug out the, um, well, first off they gave me a big shot at Novocaine, which lasted a little too long. Lasted four hours longer than it was supposed to, but it doesn't matter. But, uh, first they had to dig out the temporary filling from this cavity, and, uh, you know, clear away the decay on the other ones. That was the only part of it that really hurt. I mean, that I could feel, even with all numbed out. That was what I could feel, and that, that did hurt. Um, I'm not gonna lie, but... I figured, you know, there's nothing I could do about it, so just stared up at the light, and uh, I thought, you know, I'll just let it happen. The less I do, the faster it'll go, and that was true. Surprisingly enough, I actually got everything taken care of, and they cleared everything out in under five minutes, which astounded me. And they got up, they told me, all right, you know, wash, uh, wash everything out. 
That actually kind of surprised me. Never before I've actually seen an operation like that. Them to tell you to actually get up in the middle of it and wash out your mouth. But, um, they did. Then they gave me a choice. They said, well, this is something I didn't expect at all. They said, because, uh, you know, your feelings are so deep, <laughs> and because they're in the very back, we would recommend you get the typical silver amalgam filling. Um, maybe some of you remember this. Uh, I was actually really shocked by it because I didn't think they even still gave the silver fillings out. Um, you know, the last time I ever even heard of someone getting a new one was like in, in 2002, 2003, when I was little. Um, yeah, so nothing uh, took me by surprise, really, in 2014 to see they were still doing those. But uh, they said, you know, they last longer, um, they're great for these types of cavities, you know, the only thing is that, of course, they're not that aesthetically pleasing. Um, they said, you know, of course, you could go off the regular, regular, trendy, that's what I call it, trendy resin composite, that's the white filling. Said, you know, it looks nicer, of course, uh, but, well, in fillings like that, it's going to decay fast, and you're probably going to have to come in every three to four years and get it redone. And that was just the the drawing line right there, I said, you know, forget that. Uh, I really can care less how the back of my mouth looks. I, I just don't care what it looks like at all. Uh, I just put in the, uh, the silver fillings. I have no complaints. So I put in two, uh, two amalgam fillings and um, one uh, resin filling. So just didn't know I actually still gave out the, fil uh, the silver ones in, in, in this year. Right, but I'm not upset at all. I'm actually a little happy that they did the right thing. <sighs> and what I liked about the silver ones, actually, compared to the amalgam, or uh, the um, resin ones, is that they were easy to put in, and immediately, the day after, no sensitivity at all. So, you know, that's great about them. I am a fan of them. Well, I guess that's that. That was my uh, big day. Today I didn't do much. Um, didn't do much at all. At least at the time that I'm recording this. Now, this show has been recorded in uh, different segments, but, um, you know, so be it. At the time I'm recording this, I'm wearing a very uh, traditional outfit right now. Um, I am wearing a... Uh, white shirt with a high wig and collar, a uh, black black tie with very subtle dark red dots every here and there, um, black vest, formal black stripe dress pants, and a, a black frock coat, going with a very traditional ensemble of course. Um, even though it's an 80 degree day, I'm not even not even hot at all. Because people really underestimate um, how warm a frock coat is. Because let's face it, how many of you people have, have actually ever worn a Victorian frock coat before? I mean, maybe a few of you. But the interesting thing about it is that it's not meant to be a coat to keep you warm. It's meant as more like a formal garment. So this frock coat that I'm wearing, which, you know, goes down to the knee, um, is only about as, as heavy as like a suit jacket. So it's nothing like, not like a, a warm coat. You know, uh, it looks like one, but it, it's not at all. So, anyways, with that being said, how about we start heading over to the fan mail and uh, see what's going on over there? All right, let's start checking out the fan mail here. Let's read the mail. We're reading the mail. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Let's see how uh, how far back we must go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Got that one. We got that one. Here we go. And we'll just work our way up. All right. All right. Hey, review, bro. I was just wondering, what, what, 
Oh, I was wondering, okay, alright, that makes sense. I was wondering what you did with the super hot wings you got from Planet Wings back in December of 2013. Considering you barely eat one of them without consuming large amounts of water and Red Bull. I was wondering if you finished the rest of them or not. Did you wind up giving them to somebody else, or did you alter them in some way to make them edible? Alright, well, <clears throat> that's a good question. Yeah, what did I do with those wings? You saw the the perils, the the battle, the battle of the bands that uh that I went through. Just with one wing. I mean, that was one for the ages, right there. But but really, yeah. What did I do with the other? You know, nine. Well, two of them went to. Uh, People who were there at the time, I said, "Hey, listen, you want to, uh, you know, you want to try one of the hottest wings that you'll probably ever have in your life." Um, I said, "I'm just warning you right now," but they tried them, and uh, <laughs> yeah, those are some reactions also. But hey, I gave them advanced warning, and they did it by choice. But uh, other than that, you know, now there's what seven wings left to eat. Well, what did you do with them? What what uh, what what you know came about of their future? I ate them all. Yeah, v yeah, right. <laughs> no, I did. I did. It, it took a while, but I ate them all. Uh, how did I go about eating them? I cut them up into incredibly, incredibly, incredibly small pieces, and just ate them small little piece by piece, and then consolidating them into that small uh, portions uh, made them edible. The writer also says, I was wondering if I could get an official shout-out to my podcasting pals Dan, Mac, Brian, and Lucas from the Carpe GM Gamecast on the VRW show. Sure. I uh, just want to give an official and very formal shout-out to Dan, Mac, Brian, and Lucas. Hope you're all well, and you have a shout-out. Do you like insects? Uh, they're alright. Uh, I don't have any problem with them as long as they do their thing and I do mine. I don't have any, any, uh, any issues with them. Of course, if one gets in the way and is, uh, is interfering with the, uh, the gears of progress, if you will, uh, you know, then action will have to be taken, of course. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, if there's just, like, insects out in the yard and whatever, I'm not gonna come, but I'll let them live their lives and, and do what they do. You know, I don't have nothing, I don't have a, as they say in the hood, I don't have a beef with them. Yo. I don't, I have nothing against them. As I said, only if they, they get on my turf and, and start, you know, messing with me, if you want to call it that. He also says, if you could invent anything, what would it be? Oatmeal. Oatmeal. If I could invent anything, what would it be? Well, the problem with that is, uh, if I knew about inventing something, chances are I might have already acted upon it and I could have become a, uh, a trillionaire overnight. Uh, unfortunately, though, nothing's come to mind. Personally, I'm content with everything I have, so there's no need to, to upgrade anything for me. Um, no need at all. It could be a good thing, or it could be a bad thing. <laughs> and dear board of the week, are you interested in girls, and have you ever had a girlfriend? If not, do you want one? Um, yeah, right now I just have no interest. It's not a big part of my life. Um, so I guess I would apply in the, the if not category. Um, do you want one? Um, you know, I'm not going to rule out any, uh, anything. Um, certainly won't. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to focus and, and, and base my life, right, off of saying, uh, you know, oh, I need a, uh, I need a girlfriend, this, that, and the other thing. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, take this with a grain of salt, but not gonna waste my life 
uh, you know, uh, pursuing something like that. Just curious, he says, from George. The curious George. Any tips on overcoming extreme depression? If it's extreme depression, uh, I would advise going to a doctor and getting on antidepressants. Now, I don't like, uh, I would never, I myself, I don't recommend this at all, but I myself would never use antidepressants. No, I never. I wouldn't rely on uh, you know, drugs to just make me not care anymore. Um, but if it's that bad and, and you feel that your life is in danger, go see a doctor, get antidepressants. Because at least there, you'll be safe. You know, if you're thinking about suicide right now, call the suicide hotline immediately. And, you know, just you just have to think about the people who you would be leaving behind. But yeah, definitely for extreme depression, um, you know, antidepressants. Of course, though, if you're, if you're not, if you're opposed to them, uh, one always thing, one, one thing that I'll always do if I'm ever, you know, really down is, uh, just start moving. Get the blood flowing. Become active. Just go out for a walk. Um, and that really does make things better. Uh, it does. Bear that in mind. Now, it is an immediate little relief. Because if you just sit there, it leaves your mind time to wander and think, and it just makes things worse. Um, and that's just not needed, you know? In cases like that, thinking is the last thing that you want to happen. This person says, uh, I was talking about frozen pizza and home-cooked meals, and he said, no, frozen pizza isn't home-cooked. If you get your own dough and ingredients, it makes it home-cooked. Well, that, no, that's true, that's true, but I am cooking the frozen pizza at home, so if you want a literal interpretation of the word home-cooked, it is home-cooked. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, liter uh, you know, actually, though, frozen pizza is no more home-cooked than a McDonald's burger, you know, so that is fair. Eight minutes in to the fan mail reading, of course, many more minutes into the show. And do the report of the week. <laughs> How many marriage proposals have you received since you had your channel? In VORW show 64, it sounds like you subliminally received just that. I would too, though it appears someone already stole my modus operandi. Guess now I have to rely on the possibility of alternate universes and the invention of time travel. <laughs> Not a chance. Yeah, probably more than you'd think, to answer your question. Chances are more than you think. Um, though it really makes me wonder if someone ever honestly was serious. I don't know. I don't know how someone would would even consider uh, just spending the you know the rest of your life with this goon here. Um, because honestly, I think I think this is how it would go. Um, like the first three weeks would be like uh, that would be all right. Like it would be. Um, Oh, wow, well, I can't believe I'm, I'm with this guy, blah, blah, blah. And then it says, like, you hit a wall, and it's like, okay, I get the reviews, I get the suits, I get your stupid sense of humor, could you just shut up and leave me alone? Uh, I think that's how it would, it would work out. Um, but who knows? <laughs> the review bra. As you have been posting videos for quite some time, and speak well slash clearly, glad you think so, does it help with things like presentations? I have to do a presentation next week for university and was wondering if you have any tips. Oh yeah, of course, of course it helps with presentations. Um, I, have, I have no problems at all with, uh, with presentations at all. Now, of course, I'm never the first person to volunteer, right? Um, you know, Wow, with these reviews and and uh, VORW shows and all that. Yeah, I might be a big mouth, but um, I'm certainly in in situations like that. I'm never the wife of the party. I'm never the 
you know, the, the center of attention. I'm just a quiet observer. Um, but <coughs> when I do go up, uh, if a presentation needs to be given, I'll do it. I'll recite it. Uh, and then I'll sit back down. I speak clearly and concisely. And, um, yeah, I try and keep it professional uh, as much as I can. Uh, you know, but yeah, of course it has, uh, has helped. Um, what are some tips for the, uh, you know, for your presentation? Well, listen, it's going to sound negative, it's going to sound pessimistic, but whenever I have to do a presentation, uh, or whenever I had, I'll say, to do a presentation, uh, this is exactly what I thought the entire time, and it, uh, carried me through. And this applies not just in the world of education, but it, too, uh, applies in the world of business. <clears throat> so it could be applicable to any one of you. Alright. Number one. If you're doing a group presentation, right, like it's individual presentations, go in the middle. Alright. Go in the middle. It's not going to be a memorable one. Um, and it'll just be something to get over with. Uh, number two, just remember that when you're giving a presentation, nobody cares. Now, it may sound rather unnerving to hear that, but it's the truth. And if you think that, it's going to get you through it a whole lot easier and faster. Nobody, except maybe the professor, cares about what you have to say or what you're doing. All they're doing is sitting there, just staring at the clock, waiting until they could either leave, go to the dorm, go home, get paid, whatever it may be. Just counting down the minutes. Everyone is either A, too worried about their presentation, what everyone's going to think about their presentation, or B, they're already done with their presentation, or they don't have to present at all, and they're just there because they have to be there, and they really don't care. So, that's the truth. Just keep that in mind, you know, and uh, it's, it'll, it'll be fine. Some people say, oh, yeah, picture everyone in the, uh, the audience in their, their uh, undergarments. I don't know, I think that's really stupid. Um, also wishes, uh, wishes, uh, I formally wish you the best of luck on your presentation. Dear Port of the Week. Do you wear sunglasses, and if so, so, what style or styles do you like? Take care. Rarely do I wear sunglasses. I almost never do. The sun shines in my face, it shines in my face, and blinds my eyes, and and, uh, and probably does irrevocable damage. But, um... No, I almost never wear sunglasses. Um, the only times I ever really did were uh, in Hawaii. Bought them in Hawaii. Left them in Hawaii, and um, that was that. But uh, they were black sunglasses. Nothing, uh, nothing too, uh, too spectacular about them. That's for sure. But I figure most of the time, though, in, in Hawaii, I wore a hat. I wore this nice, uh, almost like a straw Panama hat. So that even, you know, outdid the sunglasses pretty much. During your last VORW, this is a different person. During your last VORW, you mentioned that you didn't understand why creepy pastas are called that. I can explain. Excellent. Creepy pasta originated from 4chan, where users spread and shared stories, often copying existing material posted by others. These weren't necessarily scary stories, just anything interesting that they've seen. This was the origin of the term copy pasta, as in copy and paste. This was a method of passing on stories and exposing them to a wider audience. Creepypasta was later used exclusively for creepy stories. Other than the general theme, they were the exact same thing as a copypasta, so the name is just a corruption of the term, serving as an inside joke. Hope this clears up some confusion. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your detailed explanation there. Uh, very well written. Thank you for writing.
How do you ensure that the state of a frozen pizza after you're baking is the same as what the pizza's manufacturer intends it to be? For example, are you knowledgeable about ovens and do you use yours correctly? And do you know when a pizza is done baking? Thanks in advance for a reply. Uh, yeah, at least, listen, I'm not gonna say, oh, you yeah, have a PhD in, a, in a oven sociology. I don't, and I don't even know if that's a real course. I mean, maybe there's there's somewhere out there that that actually has a course entitled that, but um, you know, I'm knowledgeable, hopefully, in what I'd consider to be my oven, the one that I cook things in. Um, so I'm aware that it, it, most pizzas need to be cooked a little bit on the the longer end of the time spectrum that is acceptable. Always check, make sure that all the cheese is melted, and that the edges of the crust are baked to a golden brown in color. That's how you know the pizza's done. Thanks, Oh, I already read that. Alright, well, thank you. Thank you for writing, sir. Yes! Exclamation point, exclamation point. Thank you so much for seeking out, finding, and trying the Elio's pepperoni pizza. I feel honored. I'm over the moon, my friend. So glad you found it worthy of a 7.7. .7. I couldn't agree more for your review. Thanks again and have a great weekend. Thank you, sir. This is the uh, individual who actually uh, recommended me the Elio's pizza. person's been a pretty long time viewer. Um, I remember this person from at least uh, early 2013 and uh, you know still with me and still writing today. And, uh, you know, it, it was the very least I could do to show, uh, you know, my thanks to this person. Um, so you, you sir, know that that review is, is entirely, uh, because of you. And when it may sound like, you know, oh, this is all your fault, um, understand that it's a compliment. So, thank you. Thank you for sticking with us. Life sucks. Yeah, sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Other times it doesn't. Have our good days, have our bad. Let's check if there's anything else I got in the wrong folders here. Yeah, here we go. Good afternoon, Mr. Bra. Bleh. We have some very important questions that require your urgent attention. Please come with us. What is your ancestry? Are you Irish, German, Italian, like many Americans? Um, I'm mostly a blend of Northern, Central, and Eastern European. Uh, Norwegian, German, Lithuanian, and uh, well, Czechoslovakian in there. Have you ever been in a physical altercation? Have you heard? No, no, I'm not a fighter. I've never been in a fight. Um, never really uh, done anything that's gotten to myself in a uh, a fight. It sounds like you don't much like the friend who got you in that car accident. Are you friends no longer? Um, I mean, there are three of you know three friends in the car. Um, I'm still very good friends with uh, two of them um, but the driver eh, not so much what do you think of old old southern dress outfits like Colonel Sanders or DiCaprio's and Django Unchained for instance um, you know they're, n they're nice white suits but uh, certainly something I wouldn't wear um, I'd go more for a seersucker suit and, and a straw boater hat and maybe a walking stick not uh, not one of those. I just don't think uh, I don't know how how well received my uh, my ensemble would be if I had decided one day to dress like a plantation owner. But um, you know, for the time being, they were nice. Um, it's just the association with them nowadays makes them uh, rather difficult to wear in uh, in today's society. But um, you know, they're nice suits. But uh, I mean, uh, sure, I'd be able to probably wear it for a review, and no one would say anything. But, uh, 
in warm weather I'm more of a fan of the seersucker or a nice tan suit. Would you go skydiving if the opportunity presented itself? Um, I would like to, I'd think of it, but I'd probably back out at the last minute. Um, though it'd certainly be a really cool thing if I ever could one day. Just be kind of scared that my parachute wouldn't open and I'd be falling to my death. <laughs> do you th what do you think of Asian style squat toilets? They're supposed to be better for you, but I feel like a fool using one. You pretty much uh, summed up my answer there. From what I, I haven't really looked up uh, that type of uh, toilet uh, too often, but um, yeah, I, I I'd feel like I uh, I don't know I I wouldn't wouldn't really use it, but. Uh, I guess if you care, if you're like a, a health fanatic, I guess it's a. Then you could end up working out at all times. Have you ever made a daisy chain? I don't think I have. Uh, I don't think I have. Have you seen many stained glass windows? Did you like them and what was your favorite? Um. Yeah, it was the, um, what have you. Yeah, I've seen them, uh, someone actually got a stained glass window in their house, I thought that was a bit, uh, odd, but, um, when I was in Chicago in 2011, went to a very nice art museum there, and there were some nice stained glass windows there, absolutely beautiful, beautiful, and, uh, he also asks, did you ever have orthodontic treatment? Never. Thankfully, never, never had the uh, the iron cage uh, wrapped around my teeth. Never had the braces. Um, yeah, my my teeth aren't the best in the world, no doubt about it. But um, they were at least passable, where I did not need any braces of any sort. Um, so it was nice that I was able to get through my uh, my years without any of that. As a special treat, I'm including my first piece of fan art. It's a Scarface Photoshop. Maybe you could use it in your show. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I definitely use it. Of course. <laughs> I really like the Monster Energy drink in the foreground. Very nice. <laughs> Nicely done, my friend. And thank you for your questions. And lastly. But not leastly, I don't think that's a word. Dear Report of the Week, Thank you so much for responding to my last message in your VORW. Your dedication and willingness to respond to your fans is commendable. For being someone who appreciates the horror genre, when done right, I thought I'd share with you some paintings by Beksinski, a Polish painter whose talent for surrealism I find to be quite amazing and a work of genius. So he brings these three images. Take a look. Take, you can take a look at them here. Thoughts on these? I love that his paintings don't rely on the shock or gross out value. That's a lot of horror related mediums can do. Thank you for reading. Sincerely, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I agree with these. Uh, certainly very you know, you know, in a way they actually are uh, beautiful. Not in the way of, say, a beautiful sunset or floral, right, painting. But they're very well done, okay? And it's a, a nice, uh, almost macabre, you know, type atmosphere pertinent to them. Uh, looking at them right now, though. I definitely see what you mean, though. How it's relying, uh, almost like a, uh, you know, it, it's done right, in uh, my opinion. You know, as you said, they don't rely on the shock or gross out value, um, but the surrealism is, uh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, beautifully done. I really like the first one here, the tan one. I just do. I think that's, that's nice. Well, let's check back the inbox. 
nothing present. Nothing present at all. So that means everything is present and accounted for in red. Well, that concludes today's VORW show. Coming up next is a, um, well, a part of the show which I was thinking about uh, editing it out, but we're going to keep it in no matter what. And, uh, you know, that'll be that. Like last time, I'll be taking my walk. Um, this has already been recorded. I'll be taking my walk and I'll be sharing my thoughts on various things, especially this channel. And I'll briefly be reiterating a few fast facts about it. Now, understand that when this was recorded, my evening may not have been uh, as smooth as things are now in the late night hour. Okay. I had a rather, well, the evening went by, but it was a rather depressing evening. I was talking about uh, some topics that I really don't like discussing with, uh, you know, people, because they always get me down. Um, I was talking about the future and all that, and it's just something I really don't like to think of. Um, so I was a bit down by the time I was on that walk. So it's a pessimistic lecture, and please understand that. That's why, for those of you who truly care, and for those of you who will truly listen to what I have to say, I'm making this announcement for specifically. So please, enjoy the talk, enjoy the little lecture that I might give whilst walking, but take it with a grain of salt. Take with a grain of salt, that means, you know, listen to it, enjoy it, but don't think of it as anything more than just part of the show, all right? Because it gives a very, in parts, a very bleak and negative look at my channel. But please, enjoy it. I hope you enjoy at least some of it. But don't take it seriously. Don't take it with anything more than just, I'm listening to it, and that's it. Because at the time, you know, I was feeling down, and it was pretty much just a way uh, of mine, of just pretty much letting out my emotions, and, uh, you know, in doing so, there were negative emotions at the time, uh, so it obviously led in a more negative, right, talk. I just didn't want people to get confused and say, oh, yeah, but I, uh, you know, you could, you can go to hell for saying this or this and that, um, so please, for those of you who care, yeah, just don't take it with, with anything more than, uh, you know, it should be taken. So don't take it with a, just, just take it with a grain of salt, you know. Just something to listen to, and, uh, and nothing more. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy it. Likewise, remember, we appreciate your fan mail, and we would love to hear from you. Send us a message over at YouTube. Send us your comments, thoughts, and opinions, or if you just want to talk, you can send me a message too at YouTube, and we will read and respond to your message at the beginning of each and every VRW show. Thank you, take care, and I hope you enjoy the next segment of the program. This is the voice of the Report of the Week, VRW, signing off. Hello. So here we are. Uh, I said I would do this. So here I am. As you know, the the last time I did this, which is about a, a show or two ago, you know, I'll be honest with you, I uh, I wasn't entirely sure on what I was going to talk about. Today is uh, no exception to that either, or tonight, if you will. No exception to that either, but uh, you know, I'm taking my walk, and I decided to bring the small little portable microphone with me this time, and I've decided I'm going to record whatever utterances uh, I state, or whatever's on my mind, I'll say. Will there be any regrets? Potentially. Uh, maybe there won't be, but no matter what, anything goes, uh, and I'll definitely be uploading this 
So, I guess that's a good thing. Maybe you might think of it as a bad thing, but uh, generally, uh, from the people who did talk to me, the last one was uh, pretty well received. If you're not familiar with what this is, I like to take night walks. Uh, they play a pretty significant role in my days. It's usually a time where I could clear my mind, enjoy nature, and get a little exercise too at the same time. So, that said, yeah, it plays a significant role in my day. And someone mentioned a little while ago, why don't you bring a microphone along and and one of them, and, uh, you know, record it. So I did that once. I liked doing it, I didn't have a problem with that. And I'm doing it again, okay? So, this is gonna be a bit longer of one. Maybe about, you know, 20, 25 minutes in length. Uh, now the reason being, all right, the reason being, uh, as you know, you know, fan mail was life. Um, not too big turnout-wise. So, there's little to talk about. So, with that being said, we're doing this where surely my mind will be racing and I'll have plenty to discuss and to talk about. So, that's why. Here approaches a slow driving truck. Now, a stopped truck. I thought he was going to go and comp with my suit or something, but I think he just stopped looking for for directions or something. There he goes. Maybe he had to check his phone and he was just being respectful. The thing I like about walking in these, these areas, these parts, um, especially at night, is that there's no one here. Alright. Ah, passing car, you know, every now and then. You know, but all in all, nobody here. No one. All the buildings are empty. All the streets are lit. The streets are all lit up. But, you know, all in all, there's nobody here. Empty. So far in my procession down this road, you know, that truck was the only person here, and um, other than that, nothing. Nobody. All the buildings have their lights on, but there's no one in them. All the street lights are on, but there are no cars to traverse these streets. So, realistically, I'm all alone here. I'm, I'm alone. The only person here. So that's another reason why, you know, I could walk with this microphone here and talk and regular volume and no one will think anything because there's nobody here to to think anything really. Alrighty then. I'm taking a long walk tonight. Pretty much doubling up on the length of my walk. So this evening of mine wasn't the wasn't the best one in the world. It really wasn't. Um, yeah, I was pretty depressed. I'll be honest with you. I was. I was talking to a friend of mine online. My uh, Canadian friend. And, uh, I don't know. We were talking about a couple of topics. We were talking about money and lack thereof. And the future and the bleakness to it and what have you. Nothing positive. Nothing that I want to stay, stay again. You know. So. You know, that's that. Um, so from a pretty bad evening, you know, I want 
want to clear my mind, think of other things. Even just talking like this kind of helps, you know, get it out of your system. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing I really want to think about any longer than I have to. So, what am I, do what am I going to discuss? You know, here at the walk. Right now, at the end of this road, there's a desolate traffic circle, so I've just been making my way around that. Heading up this long road again, then we'll come to a, uh, a crossroads where we'll keep going and go down another long, desolate expanse, and uh, then that'll be that. So on all this, the rest of this walk should be about, you know, another 20, 25 minutes or so. You could see the glow of the traffic light in the distance green light shining down this road, now yellow, now red, what am I going to talk about today, um, this evening, you know, I figure, with all these VORW shows that I've done, uh, you know, throughout time, uh, which really, I mean, I don't know, it seems a lot longer, and a lot sooner, you know, I've been doing these VORW shows for, you know, for what, um, a few months, since, uh, since March, I believe, you know, got about 60 shows in total, um, really, that's not a lot, 60 shows, yeah, well, decent amount, but it's not like a ton, okay, and in those 60 shows, I've covered a lot of topics, I've talked a lot. I've talked about many a thing. So, I always try and keep the topics, you know, varied. I always try and keep some variation to things. But knowing, number one, these shows, produced usually every other day, have spanned about a six month period of time. And number two, knowing that my VO or W audience is almost entirely different right now than from when it started, I don't think it would do too much harm reiterating a little story or a little topic or two. So tonight's point of discussion will just be my channel, and um, it's going to be free discussion. That being said, I just came up with this on the spot, and uh, anything that comes into my mind, anything that I want to share, I'll share, and uh, that'll be that. Okay. So my channel, um, through June and July, and a little bit of August too, I did a uh, segment on this VOIW show called The History of My Channel. Maybe you remember it. Maybe you weren't watching back then. But um, it was a pretty cool thing, you know. I talked about my, my channel, the history thereof. Um, and what have you. I thought it was pretty cool, pretty cool thing. But uh, in this little little thing, I'm just going to talk about my channel, maybe some of the early history, maybe some stuff that I may never have shared before, even in that show, maybe some more of the modern events of my channel that uh, I have not shared yet, anything that comes to mind, and even if I may be reiterating you know, one or two things. Sometimes just rephrasing something makes all the difference, and it's a completely new thing. Um, so please bear that and uh, keep that in mind, if you could. So my channel, this, this channel, the Report of the Week, was founded in uh, uh, 2011. I'm sorry, not 2013, 2011. Um, February the 20th of 2011. You might be wondering, you know, why did you start doing these, uh, you know, review videos? Um, we're coming up at the intersection now. Why did you start doing these review videos? Why do you want to, you know, what really appealed to you about doing reviews so much, you know? Um, and, you know, what's up with the whole suit and tie garb and, um, you know, all that BS. Maybe you're wondering that, maybe you aren't. But... <clears throat> I started doing the reviews in 2011, mostly because I was inspired by a channel by the name of Pizza Wars, 
it was this gentleman who did, uh, I guess pizza reviews. And I liked them, and I thought, you know, these are pretty cool things to do. I just had a new camera at the time. And at the time, I was really fascinated with energy drinks. So I thought to myself, why not do energy drink reviews? So that's where this channel was born. Originally, my channel was not going to be called the Report of the Week. Instead, it was going to be named like the Weekly Report or something to that extent. But that name was taken, I believe. So, you know, I was kind of surprised when the Report of the Week wasn't taken as a name. But anyways, so we started out doing these reviews. Um, they were never meant, never were they meant to be, you know, a long-term thing, all right? In 2011, if I asked myself, where do you see this channel to be in the year of 2014? I probably would have answered something to the extent of dead and buried. It would have been over with. You know, this whole YouTube channel deal and um, this whole review thing really only supposed to be, you know, a couple months in length. Um, wasn't gonna be any, it wasn't going to be anything long. I was just going to try some energy drinks, share my thoughts on them, pack up and leave. That was going to be the whole plan, but things changed, ideas changed, circumstances changed, and then in early 2013, the internet screwed me over, and now I'm here. So pretty much through 2011, um, early 2011, I realized I liked doing these reviews, um, I enjoy doing them, and I decided, you know, I'm going to keep doing them. It became more of a, a show, rather than just a purely informative review. Uh, and this continued through 2012 into early 2013. It became more of a show than a, a purely, you know, informative review. And what do you mean by that, lecturer? By that, I mean, doing these reviews wasn't just sitting here and reading off the facts. But instead, it was getting behind the camera, being able to be myself, tell a few jokes, and being able to speak my mind on a certain product while conveying the facts as well. Something that I enjoyed very much doing. And I did them at will. I did the shows at will. Uh, at the time, I usually only compose about one, one episode per week. Um, hence my name, The Report of the Week. So through 2011, I enjoyed doing the reviews. I did them mostly for uh, for fun in, in 2012. I kept doing them. I gained a small fan base of around, you know, 100, 200 viewers. Um, maybe 20 views per video. Nothing, you know, too extraordinary. But they're very loyal and a very nice fan base. It's kind of like one of those small towns where everyone knows everyone. Uh, knew all my original fans. Knew all their, well proverbial online faces, um, more like I knew them by their names and avatars, uh, but same thing pretty much if you want to make the comparison between that and, and life. Um, regardless though, good community, everything is working out fine. You know, listen, I'll be honest, we had our ups and downs, this channel had its ups and downs. Um, some days were better than others. 2011 was pretty smooth. Um, 2012 was pretty smooth, a few, you know, a little bump in the road here or there, it was smooth. January of 2013 came along, everything went south. Stayed south, and still is south. And by south, I mean down, downhill. You know, what happened, what went wrong, my, my, my dear lecturer, what happened? I screwed up. 
So what? We're you know, we're human. It's life. So what? Big deal. You messed up. Who cares? The magnanimity which I screwed up, uh, I still cannot forgive myself with. Now, a variety of factors came in here. This all started on around January the 13th of 2013, early 2013. Pretty much, the stupid pan pizza review went viral. Something I never asked for, something that I never wanted, but something that happened anyways. Stupid video went viral. Didn't do me any good. You know, the day before, I had a small little community of viewers whom I all knew and cared about to, you know, hundreds of thousands of complete and total bleep, bleepity bleeps. None of them were respectful, none of them were were people who I wanted watching my reviews. Overnight, I turned from an actual reviewer to a circus clown. Or, you know, in the case where people just couldn't stop looking away, I ended up being like a car wreck on the side of the highway. Overnight, that happened. I was a laughing stock of every single forum and website pretty much had any, you know, activity that was popular. I, I couldn't stand it. And back then I was stupid enough to stand up for myself. So, when people, you know, when people, what's the word? When people attacked me online, I fought back. And in the end, I lost that battle due to various circumstances. Only a few days after my video went viral, um, I pretty much left uh, left YouTube for about two months. Couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand not only what was going on with my channel, but my own behavior with that. I stopped and took a break. So that being said, we returned back in 2013. Okay. Great. Back in business. Might have been March. Someday in late March that I returned back with an energy crisis show after my two month hiatus. Was pumping out videos weekly again. A return to normalcy, as you might say. As Mr. Warren G. Harding once said. Anyways. So things went smoothly through through 2013. I learned my lesson. I realized that I screwed up. And I just hoped for the best. So things were alright. Okay? Things were alright. But after that, I was stuck with a reputation with this channel. That I still can't shake today. Uh, I know it's gotten better. It's gotten better. Um, it's still something that some people associate me with, and that is that idiotic pan pizza review. Um, you know, and there's nothing I could do about it. In time, it'll completely fade away. But, um, you know, back then, that's all I was known for. Oh, yeah, the, the guy that did the pizza review with that oversized suit, right? <sighs> Certainly not a proud reputation. So, things are doing alright, man. Right? Things were alright, the future was looking optimistic until uh, around a year ago, and until around maybe September of 2013 came about, around, came by. Things went south again. What happened? Why things go downhill again with this channel? Well, certain side I found out about my videos and uh, well they were brutally honest maybe 
maybe at one point in time back then I would have said they were lying. But now I just think they were brutally honest about my videos in a still what I call offensive manner. Um, I'm not going to name names of the sites. I'm above that. But if you know me well enough, you'll be able to put two and two together and you know what site I'm talking about. So, from September on, on to at least February of 2014, maybe even March, a certain site knew my videos and was being brutally honest. I said this, that, and the other thing, which at first I thought were insults, but then I realized, you know, it's just the, the difficult truth. not going to get in depth to anything, but in the end, their tirades every single day, and their hatred, and their insults, some of them were genuine insults, others were just the brutal truth, um, so it was kind of a, a mix of each, uh, if you want to call it that, but all of this put together, couldn't handle it. I got depressed, I hated myself, hated this channel, was ready to shut it down on a number of times because I couldn't take it anymore. I still can't necessarily say I like myself, but there's nothing I could do about it. I am who I am, and I can't change anything, so I may as well embrace it and cope with it and make the best of it. But for several months, for about six or seven months straight, hated myself, pretty depressed. All right, early 2014 rolls around. Things still aren't good. The depression, you know, gets a little better. It does, I'll be honest. Loosens up a little bit. Things lessen up a bit. Things go a little better. They do. I just like to branch out and start doing the VRW show. Which, um... Started out originally as a recap of Walking Dead episodes. As well as just regular lectures. But then changed more into, uh... Sharing my thoughts on various topics. Like I am now. Following that, things generally got, uh, I guess, got a little better for the channel. Audiences changed. I really didn't change. But, um, you know, things loosened up a bit. But I don't know. Damage has been done. At least it's not an everyday thing, you know, where I sometimes sit down and think, you know, why do I still do this? Why do I still get here behind this camera and, and subject myself to all of this, you know? I mean, believe me, I was, I've been, there have been more times than I can count uh, that I've thought of shutting this channel down permanently, but I have not. The most controversial videos, which really aren't controversial at all, um... I have since gotten rid of. There's a video in which myself and my my father reviewed a beverage back in 2012 when we did not anticipate that it would have been viewed by thousands upon thousands of disgraceful idiots who have nothing better to do with themselves and their lives than to insult. But after, you know, that happened, 
took the video down. I really don't care what people have to say about me. Um, that is the truth. I just don't like hearing it when, you know, people start saying things about someone whom I care about very, very much. And that's where I draw the line. All right. Because truly, if I cared so much about what people said about me, well, let's face it, this channel would have been taken down long, long ago. And while, of course, I have deliberated on it, my final decision remains clear, and that's to leave it up and continue producing, producing videos regularly. There's another video which, you know, uh, I gave a lecture on a non-controversial topic, but everyone felt the need to, to mock me about it. And you know, the list goes on and on. Nothing more we need to share about. But those videos are gone forever. Uh, and I guarantee you they will never return. I'm sure I have them saved on my computer. I could upload them at any given time, but uh, I will not. So things today have quieted down a bit. But, even to this day, my foolishness and my mistakes, my errors of days past, still are with me, and I'm still reminded of them every day. And likewise, the events that have occurred between September and February, we'll say, of 2013 and 2014, live on with me, and maybe they've destroyed a certain part of me, I don't know, they very well may have. So while things are perfectly fine today, really, if you think about it, they couldn't be any better. I'm making videos regularly. I have an abundance of things to review. I'm doing hour-long podcasts. I have a beautiful audience. And most of the time I have them around to keep going on. You know, the events of days past have done irrevocable damage. And there is no doubt about it. So on an ending note, I'll say this. My channel has a history, a rather short, time-wise, though long, event-wise. It's had its ups, its downs, even worse downs. One thing's for certain, regardless of how things have gone, how good or bad things have gone, how worse things have gone, I kept going, and I'll keep going with this channel. Assuming nothing happens to me, assuming I'm still here, you'll see me in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, 2020 and hopefully beyond Right here on YouTube. I don't plan on going anywhere. I don't plan on really changing anything So that being said Take this with a grain of salt really Take it with a grain of salt. I don't care But I present to you a short, depressing history of my channel. Thank you for listening.